Hi everyone, welcome back to another tutorial. Um, I'm painting in my kitchen again this week as it's really damp and really cold out there in the backyard. I don't know if you can see it or not, but it's really damp and wet out there. It's raining very, very heavily here in Cork at the moment. Um, so I'm doing it in my kitchen again today. I hope you don't mind. Um, this week I'm going to paint again. Uh, it's something very similar to which I painted before. Uh, a boat with a reflection in the water. It's very eye-catching and I just love these kinds of scenes because Even though they look quite complicated you can simplify it and you can make it really really stand out on the canvas So I'm hoping to achieve that today uh, today. I hope you don't mind um, It's gonna be a nice one some lovely colors in this and again I'll simplify it as best I can for you out there. Uh, so yeah, that's what I'm going to paint. I just kind of I was scrolling through my phone in my gallery looking for things to paint. There's a lot there that I want to paint, but this one really just kind of caught my eye. It's been there a long, long time, and I've been wanting to paint it for so long. It's similar to one I'd done, done a long time ago, just a boat on its own with a reflection coming down, a real detailed reflection. Um, I want to try that today, okay? So grab your paints, grab your stuff, follow me along if you want to learn how to paint. Um, a very realistic boat reflection just using simple basic materials and techniques okay grab your stuff and follow me along don't go anywhere okay, here we go um my canvas <coughs> excuse me there's the photograph isn't that lovely now a nice close-up reflection let's get into some nice real proper detail with this reflection and see can we create a lovely simple oil painting um of a boat with a reflection but not making it too complicated okay there's my palette and my colours are titanium white, Naples yellow, burnt cyanide, some cadmium yellow pale, some phthalo blue, a little cadmium red, some crimson, um, some lamp black and burnt umber. There are my colours. A nice colourful palette today. Would you agree? Now, it's a 16 by 12 canvas, primed once. I didn't over prime it, okay, because I don't want it to be too kind of slippery. Um, sometimes a slightly dry canvas is good for blending with your finger and that kind of stuff. I have some turpentine with a little drop of linseed oil in it already. Some blue tissue paper, any kind of tissue paper at all, um, paper towel or something. And my brushes. All lovely brushes. Look, some wonderful, wonderful brushes here. Um, I'm going to start with my large stubby brush, okay? And I'm just going to put a very simple background in this now, all right? Very bright, luminous background. I'm going to try some blue with a hint of white, okay? Um, I'll dampen my brush slightly. I'll take a tiny amount of phthalo blue, all right? I'll take a hint of crimson because looking at it now, it's a very bright luminous whitey blue kind of a warm bluey color um so i don't want just to use phthalo on its own i think a little hint of crimson or even a hint of cadmium red might actually work quite well also so let me just mix up plenty of this here now lots and lots and lots of white and i'm taking tiny amounts of tinners as i go just to thin it out to what I want, okay? Um, there's no point in going right in and adding loads of thinners too early on because you'll run into trouble. It'll be very, very, very wet. A little bit more white now in that. That's still a bit, bit blue for me. A little bit more cadmium red. Um, I want, it's a very strange kind of a hue that I'm going after. It's a very whitey color, but it's warm. Does that make sense? Now, you may not be able to see this on camera, all right? Just because of the way the colors are on the camera. Um, but, I'm, you know, just it's a very, 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 very bright, 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 bright background. And that's really going to help this boat stand out. Also, I did a sketch. Um, sorry, I never mentioned that. I did a lovely sketch here. Just a very, very quick sketch. But I kind of adjusted it somewhat. So I'm going to kind of go over some of the pencil lines because it's still not quite right, the drawing of it. Um, 
the perspective is just not quite right in it so i may kind of adjust it as i'm going does that make sense now a little bit more red a little bit more blue um, I'm going to come down here. I want to go over some of some of these lines just here, okay? I'll go over some of the pencil marks because you can, if you wish, leave the pencil marks. I prefer uh, sometimes to kind of paint over some of my pencil marks. So I want to go over some of these here now just to kind of Try and fix the outline of the board. There we go. So that's not too bad though, so, so far. Um, a little bit more thinner, a little bit more white. Um, a little more hint of phthalo blue. And come over here and fill this in. I'm not really too, too fussy about the background, okay? I just want to just get a very loose background. I'll put a bit of detail in further down, but for the higher up, I just want to keep it simple. Very, very simple. I think that's probably the best way to go. A little bit more red, blue and white. And down here. So I don't know if you can see this colour on camera or not, but it's um, a very luminous kind of a bright blue kind of a hue. All right. Now, let me see. I'm going to start adding a little more crimson. A little cadmium red and when i say adding now i'm just really what i mean is i'm only just taking tiny tiny amounts of the color okay tiny amounts you could hardly even see the color on the brush um, because these are very very strong colors so a tiny tiny amount goes a very far far distance when you're mixing okay so just be careful with that um, the crimson especially and the thalo blue all you want is to touch and that's enough to darken your color to what you want okay just be mindful of that because let me just get some white hair there's a lot of blue in this picture I don't know if you can see it or not but even down in the shadows in here you can see it's a kind of a bluey purple kind of a color and I think a lot of beginners kind of struggle with that um, aspect of painting. You know, they kind of paint what they see and it takes a lot of practice to discover colors which are there, but you just can't see yet. So it takes a lot of practice, I think, to, um, to learn how to kind of spot certain colors. So, for instance, I can see a very kind of a purpley color in here. Now, a beginner looking at this might think that it's just a dark brown or a black or something like that because it's in shadow. But it's more of a purple and it goes into a kind of a brown then, doesn't it? Or almost a kind of a yellowy brown kind of a color. So that's going to be quite fun. We're going to have a bit of fun with that. Now, that's a bit dark for me still. Let's take some more white and a bit more cadmium red. I'm inclined to go for more of the pinky kind of side i'm just going over that reflection just slightly there now okay and let me just bring this right down right across some of that let's take a bit of white put a bit of white through there take a bit more white So I'm just concentrating on getting this completely filled in, okay? So we have a basic background here now, just as opposed to having just pure white. And what I'm going to do then is switch brushes. Um, I'm going to try a nice new little flat brush. Okay, it's a number six flat synthetic, very cheap synthetic brush. Dampen that, and I'm going to go in now to some phthalo blue, uh, a little cadmium red, and a hint of white i'm going to come down then and what i'm going to start doing with that very thin color okay it's a very very thin mix i am going to just start suggesting little slight ripples in the water okay just here and there it's just to add a little bit of um movement that's all 
that's all i'm trying to achieve now okay a little bit of movement there's even some up around up here but it's very very subtle and you can even soften it out with your finger as well and i wanted the canvas to be slightly dry for this reason so i could just kind of add touches and soften it out slightly like that that was my aim when i was priming the canvas i didn't want it too kind of wet and slippery now this is all just very loose okay um you can put little hints of color in you can do a lot more than this if you like but i just want to keep it nice and simple as it comes down further i'm going to start adding a little bit more now a bit more thalo blue a little more white and we get some nice they're just simple ripples not too de no detail in this whatsoever okay um because i want the focus to be on the boat and the reflection that's what the painting is about now i'm going to just give my brush a quick clean there and take some white on its own and i'm going to pop in a little bit of white as well just to give i suppose just to, if anything just to give that little bit of shimmer across the water okay it's just here and there look it's not everywhere and i'll give a couple of little wiggles as well what i like to call these kind of snaky wiggles on the water surface and i'm probably even doing too much um it's difficult when to know when to stop when you think okay enough is enough that's it let's stop um i just want to kind of create a little bit of texture here and there now that's that's all i think i need okay i'm going to soften some of that with a soft brush a soft blender brush or a powder brush more like my wife won't be best pleased with me for taking all her, her powder brushes but you know she has more than enough to keep her going right um i think that's the water finished okay water finished move on to the boat now would you like me to zoom in on the boat or would you like to see me just mixing it's difficult to know because uh let me see do you know what i leave it as it is just for now okay i hope you don't mind and i'm going to stick with this brush i think yes i'll stick with this brush and i'm going to start with some of the i get the middle of the boat finished here okay let's let's get all this finished and i keep with the same brush in fact i may switch to a slightly fuller kind of a brush um, let me just pick this up here now i dropped something on the floor and a slightly thicker flat brush i think just to get it done a little bit quicker all right let me dampen the brush and remember now we said we had a lovely deep purple in here let's take some phthalo blue some crimson maybe a little cadmium red to warm it slightly actually and a little white okay now when i say purple i'm thinking more of plum so maybe more on the red side of purple that kind of um hue like a kind of a dark grapey kind of a color a red grape kind of color okay let's just try this okay i'll go with that for now and we can add to it let's just go around our boat in here and come right down you can't really see the base of the boat in here because it's kind of covered with ropes and all that kind of stuff let's just go like that we go right over our center line and then it kind of comes down and it tapers off at a slight kind of an angle like this okay now i need to mix a bit more paint and the thing about painting with oils is okay um this is important you can if you wish use the technique where you just put lots of thick paint on 
but then it becomes very messy and slippery. Um, so I prefer, and it's just my opinion, I prefer to start off with very thin mixes, okay? Just a little amount of paint on the brush because you can always add thicker layers to this later on, you see? Whereas if you put on lots and lots of very thick paint early on, it's very difficult then to add more layers to that as you go. So I'm taking a little hint of black and a little hint of crimson, okay? And I'm going to just start darkening this where it kind of comes down in the center here. I'm going to start darkening it just at the bottom, okay? And I'm going to soften it up then very gently. Does that make sense? And I'm going to do the same as it comes out into this side over here. So I'm basically just putting a dark section down in the center of this. I may add a hint of burnt umber to suggest the, the, the color of the wood. Um, but the, what happened is I'm mixing it on the canvas look so I'm taking some burnt umber just a tiny bit and I'm mixing it into the purple so it's giving the effect of a shadowy a shadow on a brown colour okay and I'm going to just follow the direction of the wood so the wood on this side is coming this way like that okay and the wood on the other side is coming kind of at an angle like that you see the way I kind of softened them together? So how does that look so far? Now the next thing I'm going to do is put this lighter colour in and then sort of blend them together. So I'm going to start with burnt umber and I'll mix everything on this colour here now because it'll pick up hints of that purple which is what you want. So burnt umber um, let me have a look here now and see what we can do. I might could take a hint of white, okay, just for a moment, just to soften the burnt umber, the richness of the burnt umber, okay? So I'll take burnt umber with a little hint of white. And I might take a hint, a hint of crimson. And the crimson, what that will do is it, it will complement that purpley shadowy colour. Okay? Now, I might take a hint of Naples Yellow into that. And the reason I like to use Naples Yellow is because it's a very opaque kind of a colour. I think that's more like it, look. Isn't that much nicer now? I'm going to follow, firstly, the top line. Let's get that top line done. And you can see I have very little paint in my brush. I'm not filling the brush too much. Okay. Now this is, an, this is a nice simple tutorial. I think most of you should be able to follow this along. Just look at the techniques, what I'm doing. You see, look, I'm softening it in now just where they meet, you see? Just like that. And we can fix the shadows and stuff then later on, so don't worry about those. And let's even go in to the shadow and let's pull some of it out slightly. I'm kind of merging them together, but not completely. Does that make sense? Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take some lighter colour. So I want to lighten this slightly. I'm going to try some Naples yellow. I'll take a hint of burnt sienna. And I'm just kind of trying it. It may not be perfect. And let's just go along some of these. And what you want to do is follow the direction of the wood. So we have planks coming along, don't we? So I'm just going to go in a slight curve across like that, look. And let them soften into the darker colour. Let's do another one underneath. So you can kind of see now it's almost showing the direction of the planks of wood, okay? Now, I'll leave it like that for now. I'm then going to take a small pointy brush. And I'm going to start putting a little bit of detail in, just, <clears throat> just on those planks. So would you like me to just... I, I leave it. I was going to just say, will I zoom in? But look, I leave it for now. Um, I'm going to go with a dark shadowy colour. I'm going to take some phthalo blue, some crimson, and then a hint of black, okay? Just a hint of black. So it's not completely black, it's not completely purple. It's a very dark colour. 
and I'm going to suggest some of the, um, the uprights. Okay, firstly, I'm going to go over to center one here because if you get the center one, then everything comes away from that. So we have, um, okay, let's just take a look here now and see. Uh, we have one coming down inside here it's almost like they're hidden so you can hardly even see so i'm going to let this one soften down into the shadow color i'm not going to make these too prominent in here okay look so they're going to start almost blending into the shadow then i'm going to put a suggestion of some of the planks coming along here okay and I'm turning them slightly. Does that make sense? Now what I'm going to do as well is I'm going to come over here and I'm going to just firstly start putting in the uprights, okay? And we have another one here. Now there's quite a bit of detail in this section here. And I'm going to take my time. I want to do it right. So, uh, where the, the planks are separating, let me just clean my brush down for a moment. Where the planks are separating, I'm going to put a slight little highlight. A very, very slight highlight, just to separate the planks, okay? So I'm going to go along the very tip, the plank, and put a very slight highlight just to show the difference in some of those planks. And what I'm gonna do, look, is I'm gonna to switch to a softer brush, a slightly flatter brush, and I'm going to go in with a, I'm, let's make up some shadow color actually, look. Let's go with some crimson and some blue, equal amounts of both, and a little white, okay? And what I'm gonna do is, I'm using this, the width of this brush to show the planks in this shadowy color, okay? Do the same here. You see what I mean? So it's just showing, it's just indicating the, the planks on the wood. Now I'm going to take a very strong shadowy color and I'm going to put a nice dark, let me take plenty of crimson in this now, okay? And I'm going to put a nice shadowy color into some of these. Now let me just put down like this first, okay? So we have the first one. Let's put the second one in here. They may not be exactly perfect now, but in general. And then we have where they come down, they kind of spike out, don't they? Like this, they come out to a point. So it has this kind of effect. I don't know if you can see this or not now, but the shadows that are being cast. Now, there are, I'm completely wrong on this. I'm gonna go across here like this, then across further, okay? Then I come across like this. And this will all take a bit of time now, okay? So don't be, there's no rush. Let's come along here with this one, and come along here with that. And because it's wet into wet, as is the case with oils, the colors will mix together slightly. So you may have to go over this a few times. I will probably have to do this um, a couple of times. 
and then right down at the bottom it's completely dark isn't it all the way through so I'll use my wider brush take a bit more color come down here make that nice and dark all the way along Now I'm just going to tidy all of this up, okay? Let me take some black, just some regular black, and I'm going to tidy this. I'm just going to kind of bring out some of my lines again, all right? Okay, and let me just separate some of those. And you can see how everything is mixing together. Now it's fine, don't worry about it. We can adjust it as we need to. I'm gonna mix then a slightly lighter color, some blue, some crimson, and a bit of white. And I'm gonna put a slightly lighter pink across some of these, okay? So that's just sort of catching the light. And look, you can try and simplify this as well. Now, you don't have to go out to all this detail. You can kind of simplify it a little bit yourself. Um, but I, I just kind of like to try and get it looking somewhat like the photograph. Okay, a little bit later. Let's just perhaps catch a little light on some of these. Okay, so just a little bit of light. Now, I'm going to go to a burnt umber with a hint of black, okay? And I'm going to just continue on with some of these uprights. So let's put another one in here. I'll put another one here and another one here and another one here okay now i'm going to add to the light side of those a little naples yellow with some burnt cyanide so just a hint and i want to catch the light okay and i'm just letting it sort of disappear as it comes down And then we have some more shadow on the back of some of those. So again, some crimson, some blue. We create a nice strong shadowy color. And I'm gonna go down the back of these and create a little shadow. And that shadow then gets a little darker in at the back. I'm going to kind of step out very slightly, okay? So let me show you. Like that. So you can see the way they kind of step out very, very slightly. No. And it's just to show the direction of the light kind of coming down. That's really all I want to achieve. Now, 
I'm just getting my photograph back up here. Um, so, yeah, that's looking pretty good. I'm quite happy with that. I'm going to put a bit of a, a rope in here. Let me take some, and the rope now you would assume is white, but it's not white because everything is in shadow, so it's a very light kind of a blue, okay? So let's take phthalo blue with lots of white. A really, really whitey blue, okay? And let's put a suggestion of that rope falling down. And this may look white to you now, but it's not. I'm going to actually going to take a little bit of cadmium red as well. Let me get a bit more of the blue. Let's get a little bit darker as it comes down. And then I'm just going to simply put in that rope. Now clean your brush every few seconds because it's going to get very dirty because of this. It's all mixing together. So keep dipping in and cleaning your brush. And in some places, it may even get a little darker. Isn't that right? So we may have little dark spots just here and there. And then we may have slightly lighter spots here and there. So I'll take a little hint of white, a little bit of blue, and I put slight hints of white. Like that, okay? And then we also have something which is casting a nice shadow inside the boat. There's this little canister. Can you see the canister? There's a lovely little canister here. I'm gonna put that in like this. And then I get a nice bright white for the highlight. So white with a hint of Naples yellow for the highlight and bring it down like that into the boat. Now you wanna keep cleaning your brush for this because it will mix. So I won't mix the color kind of too much. I'll just put it in and leave it. Maybe add a little more hint of Naples yellow with a touch of cadmium red. That gives you a very bright, um, a kind of very bright sunlit color. So with white, add it in. Put a hint of that down there, look. There, that's better now, isn't it? How is this coming on so far? I'm gonna darken this just slightly. And I may take a hint of black with that brush. Just put a hint of darkness just here and there inside. Okay, so let's stop at that. Uh, what I might do is I can actually see little dots of, are they like rivets or something? Let me just get a nice point on my brush. Little tiny rivets along some of the boards and that will help separate the boards as well, you see. They're very small. Uh, one, two, three, one, two, three. And they'll disappear into the shadows then, okay? Now that really helps, didn't it? I think that made a big difference. Now let's continue on. And let's get the outside of the board finished. Now, let me just think. I'm looking, and I'm looking, and I'm looking. I'm thinking, what brush will I use next? I think I'll go with a slightly larger round brush. Okay, let me just see now this one. I'll try a slightly larger round. And I'm going to start first with a very rich kind of, an, you see that rich orangey color? Let's try that, shall we? I can see some cyan. Um, I can see some cadmium yellow. And I might start with that first, just on the inside. Put 
so it comes out here and disappears, doesn't it? Disappears into, in behind, where you can't see it. And on the other side, take a bit more. Over here, it starts kind of dark, doesn't it? Then it gets lighter as it comes out. So let's just simply take more cadmium yellow in that. I'll try cadmium yellow first, just on its own, look. Then I'm going to start adding a hint of white into the yellow. Okay. And then it's going to darken again slightly as it comes around. And again, it disappears. Okay. Let's just soften them together where they meet. Now, how's that? I'm going to darken it up on the top. So let me just clean my brush again. Just give it a, a quick rub on some tissue and let's darken it. I'll use burnt cyanide and a little crimson, okay? And I'm going to darken it up at the top here. Now, if you find it needs to be a bit darker, just pick up a little bit of black or something like that. And let's do the same on the other side, but not too much. And there we are. And I might bring some darker colours down into the boat as well, okay? Just so that they almost merge together slightly. Okay, and there we are. Okay, so I've just zoomed in on the photograph just to give you a better view of what I'm painting. Um, I think that's a bit better. You can see everything in detail. Um, so let's carry on and just get the boat finished and I will do the reflections in part two. Is that okay? Now, I'm taking a small flat brush. Uh, no, actually, I'm wrong. I'm going to take my little round brush, okay? My little detail brush. I want to finish around the edge of that boat, just a little. Uh, let me see. There is a lovely white band on this side, isn't there? And it goes around as well on the other side. So let's start with that. I'm going to use this very light purpley kind of colour which I mixed earlier just for some of the dark spots so it starts off dark up here doesn't it and I'm just going to push down don't worry if you make a slight mistake now you can fix all of this okay and it comes down like that and it sort of disappears doesn't it then let's go to the other side and let's just bring that up like this and go across the other side as well. Okay, I'll stop it there because from there on it's just white. Now you won't be able to see the white because there's a white background there. So I may just leave it like this, feather off. And what I might do then is take a very small detail brush with some black kind of a blacky brown colour which I have already mixed on my palette and then I will just put a little dark around the inside like that okay and I'll put a little bit of that as well um, just here It's tricky enough to do this when you have shaky hands. So, just take your time. And you can leave it out if you wish. I put a little there. Okay, that's good. And on the outside here, I'm gonna suggest a little bit because it's just white. So, See what I mean? Now I'll clean that brush and take white on its own. 
and I'll pop a little white in. It may not show very well, but I'll put it there anyway. And it gets quite thick out here, doesn't it? Like that. Then on the other side, um, now I'm first, I'm just going to soften this up slightly, okay? Then on the other side, I'm just using thick paint on its own. I'm going to continue this line around like that. And it gets quite thick then, out here. I might use my slightly thicker brush for this. So let's take plenty of white on that and go right out, like so. More white again, and I'll bring this very thick band right up like that okay and i go up and over so that now is pushing everything back into the boat creating a nice separation separation just there okay there how was that now with my small pointy brush i'm just going to take another tiny bit of white there and just go along on the inside of that band just there okay now that's really fine even as it is um, I'm gonna take a slightly bluer color some phthalo blue with some white now not too much blue in this just a little and I'm gonna continue this little hump at the back bring it down and then across. And what will happen then is it's going to come to a point over here. And almost go around, you see? Now, let's go across and soften this into the white slightly, like so. I'm gonna flatten the end of it slightly. It looks a bit too, um, round doesn't it and I may even take a slightly darker color over on this side a little bit of brown or something just go in underneath that and sort of soften it in slightly like that okay then I'll take a pointy brush take a little bit of white on the very tip of your brush and give this some nice highlight here Let's try that again. Just get a little touch. And a little touch up here. Where the light is catching. Okay. Now I'm going to brighten along here a bit more. And I'll brighten the top of that barrel. Okay, that's good, I like that. And I might darken underneath here as well, okay? Just, I wanna darken it slightly. That's okay for now. Let's just work on some other details. There's a few small details in here. Something comes down in there like that. And there's another little piece that kind of coming on like that. Um, that rope, I want to bring that out over the top. Like so. Then we have a piece at the front of the boat, don't we? Like that. And then we have a nice strong shadow in behind that as well. Okay, and then let's just take something like a burnt umber or something like that and pop just a suggestion of that little piece. I don't know what it is, but it's there. 
and I'll put a little piece here, like a bracket or something like that. So it's little bits and pieces. Does that make sense? Now, there we go. That's a bit nicer now, isn't it? It's coming on nicely. Let's work now and get some of these lovely rich colours done over here. Um, I'll start with this bright side, yes? Let's go and get some nice orangey colours for this. I'll go back into my cyan with cadmium yellow, I think, for that. A hint of cadmium red. And don't try and spend too long mixing colours because you'll get frustrated when you can't find the right colour, so just mix something quickly, try it. And it will work, I promise. Right, so I have that nice rich colour there. Then it comes down and gets wider and wider, doesn't it? Now, I'll stop halfway and I will start adding more yellow into this with a hint of Naples. So cadmium yellow with Naples. And I'll come right out to the edge, out here, come down and then turn. See? Just like that. And you could even take a hint of Naples yellow with white and just pop that in to give the impression of the sun really catching that edge there, okay? Now I'm going to take some more cyanide with a hint of cadmium red and I'm going to darken just in here, okay? I'm just going to gently pull it down and leave it soften off. I may even go a little darker. Let's try a little bit of crimson with some cyanide. So a slightly redder kind of a brown just there. Okay, that's not bad. Now what I might do before I go any further is I might draw the outline of that shape on the back. Um, I'm going to go with a very rich colour. Let's go with some cadmium red and a little burnt umber. Plenty of thinners in this. Okay. And let's just fill this in first. And we can go from here then, you see, we can we know then where to stop our lines. So it comes up. Um, I'm going to go up into this a little bit more. I know this is a little bit too high, so I'll fix that as well. But let me just get this around like that. And follow it down. Like so. Now, let's fill this in. I'll take cadmium red and burnt umber. And I'm just going to fill this in with that little bit of turpentine in my brush. And I'm going to fill that in. Okay. Um, I'll go slightly higher on this side. And maybe even add a little bit more of the brown as it comes further down into the shadowy kind of colour. So I'm going to soften that up then, you see? Just like that. That's probably even enough. And perhaps a little just up here. Now if this is getting complicated, you can just simplify this yourself, okay? Um, okay, let's, let's go and take a look. I'm going to fix where I made that little mistake just there. So I'm going to fix that. I'm not very happy with that. So I might just bring my shadow down a little bit more and then bring my warm colour and take some more of that kind of warm colour that we had bring some of that in here so now I don't want to spoil it so I'm just being very very careful okay take a little white and let me just Bring a bit of white like this. There. I think we've managed to just get away with that. 
and I'll take a little bit of a dark blue put a dark blue under that and you can see even the colours are kind of softening together which is very nice now moving on to our sides um, I'm going to put a very bright yellowy white in but first of all I'm going to just draw where the red comes along so I'll take some of my red same colour as that and I'm just going to bring it across the bottom here where the water meets the boat and this will just give me a sense of where to stop with colours okay there just to give me an idea so I'll take my flat brush again and I'm going to start with white um, I'm going to take in with that a hint, a tiny, tiny hint of cadmium yellow. Cadmium yellow pale. Alright. Just a tiniest little hint. So loads of white, loads of cadmium yellow, loads of white and a tiny bit of cadmium yellow rather. And let's start with these sides here, okay? Now each one steps in slightly. okay that's good um, then we're going to start becoming slightly mauve again so let's make a little bit more mauve some phthalo blue and a hint of crimson and lots of white now lots of white in this okay lots and lots of white and let's just fill in down like this first and then I'm going to just pull across and soften that colour in across here and let it sort of fade off like so okay let's do the same again on the next one and we come down right down in with the next one here And what I'm going to do then is I'm going to darken, take some little bit of black and a little bit of crimson and I'm going to darken along some of those ridges, okay? With the tip of my brush. You can use a little pointy brush for this if you like now as well. Like so. Okay. A little bit of cross on this one. And I'll put a little hint cross on this. That's coming on quite nicely now, isn't it? Now I will start darkening them again. I'll pick up a little bit of black, it's kind of a blacky grey colour, and I'm going to deepen some of them. I'm going to just flick it outwards. Okay, like so. Then I'm going to go to my red, and I'm going to put my red in. I'm going to use cadmium red, a little hint of crimson, and some burnt umber, okay? But plenty of cadmium red in this. Now what I'm going to do is, I'm going to start stepping these slightly higher as they go along. Now that's still a little bit dark for me, so more cadmium red. So I'll start off high and then I'll come down as each one comes along, okay? Now I'll go right out to the edge here first with this one. Like this. Okay. I'm 
I'm going to pop some cadmium red on its own, just here and there, where they may catch the light. I'll switch to a smaller brush. I'll take some cadmium red with a little cadmium yellow. So I'm making a slightly brighter kind of a red. And I'll go along some of these and add a little highlight just here and there. Uh, particularly on this side here. Come down, give it a little bit of light. Now this will come together eventually, I promise. Um, little Naples yellow with cadmium red. And I want to just add a little bit of light to some of these. Now, the next stage is to get some nice dark colour. I'm going to take a nice dark shadowy colour. Some phthalo blue with a little black and a hint of crimson and lots of turpentine, okay? I just want a nice shadowy colour just to define some of these lines in between, okay? Now, very tip of the brush I'm going to go down and bring it along. I'm going to go around and leave it kind of disappear, okay? That's the idea. So let's try another one. Okay, come along. Like so. And we go again. Now I know on the photograph there's a lot more of these, but I just want to kind of simplify it. And we go again. And we go again. And more of an angle then on the bottom one here, okay? Now I want to darken some of those reds. I'm going to use a bit of crimson and I'm going to darken some of them. And then I'm going to lighten some of them as well. So I'm going to take some cadmium yellow with the red and a little Naples yellow. And I'm going to lighten some of them where they're catching the light just here, okay? And perhaps again along here and along there. The next thing I'm going to do is take some more of my bright white and I'm going to pop some small little highlights in here. And then I'm going to go along with that same colour and I'm going to go in like this and just help some of those lights just kind of stick out a little bit more. Okay, then I'm going to sharpen some of these ones here uh, I might add a little light to the front of this I'm just looking at the reference photograph now and I'm picking out just pick out little colours where you can see little colours just pick out small little tiny spots here and there I'm going to take a dark colour with a burnt umber and just go along under this hair, just give that a little bit of shadow, and also here, now take more red, and I'm just going to define. This now we also have a dark blue 
on the back of that, don't we? A little bit of red, a little bit of blue. And let's go like that. And again, the same on the other side. Like that. That's coming on nicely now, isn't it? It needs to be a bit more blue, I think. A little bit of blue and a little bit of white. This is really fun painting scenes like this. Because you realise as you're painting that, you know, realistically, it's just... It's just a series of steps. That's all it is. You know what I mean? Um, so you know, try and put all those details out of your head. All the little details. Try and separate them all. That's what I would say. Okay. I know they're not perfect, some of them. But, you know, we're, we're learning as we go. Now let's go to the other side and get this finished and we'll call this part one finished then, okay? The other side is quite simple. It's just a blue and a white with a little bit of crimson or cadmium red, whichever one suits. And let's just fill this in. Now I know there's red on top there, but that's okay, we can go back over that. All right, so each one sticks out slightly than the next one, doesn't it? Like so. Would that be correct? Now I'll take a slightly darker color. I'm gonna take some phthalo blue a little cadmium red and a little hint of black and I'm going to put a darker colour just down here I'm going to turn the brush as it comes down you see just to give the impression of the darkness and then I'm going to get more blue So now I have my basic colours laid out, right? What I'm going to do next is I'm going to start putting in some of the lighter shades in there. So a little phthalo blue with lots of white. All right, lots of white. So that makes it very luminous. Phthalo blue, lots of white. And I'm going to start getting some of the shapes So we have that, maybe a little bit more white again. Um, this one comes down like that, doesn't it? And then I'm going to just start softening some of the rest. Okay, back to my small pointy brush. I'll take some dark colour, some black. Some of that very dark pinky black I used earlier. And I'm going to put in some of these shadows, okay? And we'll put one under here. Then they start turning down. Isn't that correct? Like so. We have one under the red band as well. So I bring that along and then I put in my red. So let me just get a nice small round brush. And it's not red really, it's like a pinky kind of a mauve. Because it's in shadow, so it's going to be a slightly dull uh, with a hint of kind of a blue in it. 
that make sense? So I'm going for a kind of a ready mauve, maybe a touch more crimson on the outside here. Okay. Um, yeah, that's not too bad so far. I'll take some of that color for the base down here as well. Maybe a hint of cadmium red in there. And we have a little hint of that red down there. Okay, just like that. And I just want to go back down to my pointy brush and just kind of refine some of those lights in there. So there's a little bit of a lighter colour coming along here. This one is the same. Now it may not be as bright as this, but I feel it needs this just to kind of lighten it slightly. Okay, just a little touch, a little dab. Um, and then I refine again this edge coming down here. Like so. And I refine it up at the back here also. And I think my friends that will do. I put a slight brightness on this to show that it's kind of reflecting from the water. Just on the edge. And we could strengthen the red slightly on the inside because it gets warmer as it comes in. Don't know if you can see that on the photograph. It gets slightly warmer as it comes in. And maybe a hint of that lighter color just here as well. Give it a little bit of light. And I'm going to say that's finished, part one, okay? I call that part one finished. Let me zoom in close and let give you a good look at what we have created so far. And there you are. I hope you've enjoyed that, everyone. Okay, I'll be right back with part two in just a moment. Don't go anywhere. Um, let me fix this. That's very nice and very happy so far. Reflections in part two, don't go anywhere. I'll see you very, very soon.